Good morning, students, family members of students, friends, and well wishes joining us on YouTube. Welcome to day two of the Faculty of Medical Sciences Orientation Exercise. To those who were here yesterday, welcome back. And to those joining for the first time, welcome, welcome, welcome. I am Miss Melissa Walker, and I will be your chairperson for today's program. And of course, welcome to all the faculty who are joining us on Zoom. So yesterday, you would have been welcomed and addressed by the faculty leadership. So the heads of department, program leads, including the dean would have welcomed you. Today, you will be welcomed and addressed by our student leadership for the most part within the faculty. Because at UWE, this is your place to shine. And of course, we don't just train nurses, physicians, physical therapists, radiographers, dentists, basic medical scientists, and clinical pharmacists. We also cultivate and develop and also encourage the leader that is within all of you that will be joining us. Our main address, address today will be done by our microbiologist, Dr. Allison Nicholson, because guess what, everybody? COVID are key. So we're going to have to talk about COVID and what do we need to do to protect ourselves. So if you have any questions as the activity proceeds, I encourage you to write in the YouTube chat and the faculty members that are monitoring the chat will answer directly if they can or they will send it to me and I will ask the questions and the relevant faculty members will join us on Zoom. So welcome again, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I can't hear you. And you know, if we were in the face-to-face -face program, I would say, where are all the nurses? And they would say, yay. And I would say, where are all the physicians? And they would say, yay, and so on and so forth. But we can't do that. I know you're doing it as I'm calling them, but welcome, welcome to everyone. So the first part of our program, you are going to be greeted and welcomed by the Guild representatives and student association presidents. So of course, we're gonna start with our Guild Rep, who is the fac who is a rep for the Faculty of Medical Sciences. So let's welcome our Faculty of Medical Sciences Guild Rep. All right, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm Raj Smith, a uh, fourth year medical student, and I am the Guild Faculty Rep for Medical Sciences Faculty for this academic year. Um, I wish I could do this face to face. Um, as you see, I'm ungroomed. I must apologize, but I'm trying to abide by the COVID rules to stay at home. And I've been staying at home as I have online classes. But I must say good morning to you all, to your parents and you as well. And this is a great achievement. It's your first step in your line of greatness, building your, your tower to your final destination. Um, and I was myself here in first year um, as a guild rep, um, representing the students. But over the years, I have developed my leadership skills and reached this point. The um, reason why I said that is because I don't remember anything from my, from my time in orientation, what my guild rep said. But I want you to have a takeaway message. I must say that even though you traverse your university life in an odd fashion to begin, you must abide by your rules that you create for yourself, and you must go ahead and create a legacy for yourself. Building your legacy is the best thing that you can do for yourself. However, I know of many students, um, nurses, um, med students, um, all of the students of the faculty that leave the university and don't know anybody from, from one department. And under my manifesto, I propose a one prayer initiative to build faculty pride. And I seek to start it here today. So if you remember nothing else I said, Remember one purple. One purple, we're reaching that it's one faculty for all of the students, and you must, you must liaison and partner with everybody in the faculty. So in the future, if you're a nurse and you're underwater, you want some blood feature, you can call and say, yo, Bob, Dr. Bob, um, you know Dr. Bob from first year, can you meet him somehow on the faculty, you talk to him. Dr. Bob can help you, a physician can help you, a PT person can come and assist you, just doing a favor, just because you know them. A lot of people leave the faculty, and don't know from their faculty, and even other faculties as well. You might need an accountant in the future. You might need somebody from gender studies to do a, a survey for you or something. So you have to, you have to, um, have to learn to network. Networking is key while building, building your legacy. So again, I must say congratulations. It is a great achievement to be here. Your, your, 
your selection to this university is not just by chance, it's destiny. And I believe in destiny, and I believe that you will all do great in the future. So um, I'll see you guys later with my guild presentation that we have for you. And I must welcome you all again. And any questions you have, you can direct them to me as much as I can help. And I'm looking forward to seeing you guys as, as soon as possible, safe time. So continue to remain safe. Stay at home if you have to. Enjoy your online classes. And welcome to the University of the West Indies Medical Sciences Faculty. I thank you. Have a great rest of the day. Thank you, Mr. Smith. I love it. One purple. That is excellent. So, Mr. Smith, in his welcome, said, if you don't remember anything else, you remember one purple. We're one faculty. We're one team because we're all working together to help our patients. And he also said, remember, create some rules for yourself. Live by those. But I will also say, learn the rules of the university, learn the rules of the faculty, and abide by those as well. So I'm going to next welcome the guild rep from the MBBS program. Please make the person welcome. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Omar Edwards. Um, one correction to Ms. Walker's statement, I'm not the guild rep from the MBBS program. I'm the JAMSA president. It stands for the Jamaica Medical Student Association. And I would like to welcome you guys to the Faculty of Medical Science. Um, one thing I want you guys to know is that, yes, you might be starting med school in a slightly different modality than what is normally going on but everything will proceed the same. You still have access to all the resources. Um, you just, you still have access to all the faculty members. It's just a matter of reaching out. I will agree with Mr. Smith when he says set rules for yourself. It's gonna be different. You're not gonna be in a room with everybody to link up with everybody to be like, hey, let's create a study session. But get to know the persons in your classes as they come on and you can form your own online study groups and we can help you in facilitating that. Um, as you go throughout the year, um, just remember you worked hard to be here. Um, it might be different, but you have the determination, you have the will, you're not here by chance, you're, you're here because you wanted to be here. So keep the hard work that you started before and it will carry through. This is not a sprint, it's a marathon. So even though you get knocked down, just get back up and keep pushing on. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Edwards, and I stand corrected, President of JAMSA. And he said something that I want all of us to remember. It's not a sprint, it's a marathon. That means you have to have some endurance. Okay, let's move on to the representative from DDS, the DDS program. Hello, good morning, everyone. It's so nice and wonderful to be here. I just want to formally congratulate all of the students who have been accepted to their various programs. I want to welcome you to the Faculty of Medical Sciences. You've already heard it before that UWE is the place to shine. And I've seen it beforehand. This place is a place of growth. So don't be afraid to get involved. Get involved, find your support group, and like my colleagues already said before, that it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. So keep that in mind, believe in yourself, and trust that you will finish strong. Others have done it before you, so you can do it too. And I just welcome you again, and I hope to see you soon. Be safe, and we hope to see you. Thank you. Thank you, Miss. Turnquest and Ms. Turnquest's main point was get involved, get involved. We are going to take our representative from the physical therapy program. Good morning. Good morning. 
Pleasant morning to all in attendance. Um, to my fellow comrades, congratulations on your achievement. And um, for my physical therapy students, welcome to phys the physical therapy family. This is a remarkable mi milestone. Is, it is one of the many you will encounter on your path to success. You have demonstrated a great amount of enthusiasm and perseverance in a time of much uncertainty and, and fear. Sorry. You have endured what 2020 has thrown at you thus far and still excelled. It is my utmost pleasure and privilege to welcome you to the University of the West Indies and furthermore, the Faculty of Medical Sciences. We are privileged to be attending one of the best universities and which has produced an abundance of successful members in society and continue to do so. Even as the disparity in the current circumstances continue, we must move forward and continue our journey of success. And so I leave this quote with you. Whatever the mind of man can conceive and believe, it can achieve. The starting point of all achievement is desire. You cannot do great things if you cannot do great things. Do small things in a great way. Napoleon Hill. Just want to leave a couple of words with you again. With this being said, I urge you to continue on your path to success and integrate yourself into this new chapter of your life. I know that making this step into tertiary education can, be, can bring a variety of emotions and questions, but rest assured that all will be answered in the time in which they should be. Exercise patience with the process, but maintain your enthusiasm and inquisitive mind. So three things, take responsibility for your learning. You're responsible for yourself and your academic achievements. So do the necessary due diligence to attain your goals. Your faculty and re re respective department staff are doing all that is necessary to assist you during your tenure. Make the most of your stay at UE. I encourage you to get involved as much as possible. The university offers a wealth of opportunities to capitalize on. Make the most of these opportunities within your capacity to do so. Embrace differences that the university offers. I encourage you to integrate yourself and Sorry, I encourage you to integrate yourself with the different departments as we are one faculty. Embrace your uniqueness and allow yourself to develop into the best version of yourself and maybe beyond your imagination. Be bold. So in conclusion, despite all that you have incurred, you are here. Bring with infinite potential, your capacity for success is limitless and you are in control of your achievements. In this new chapter, it's yours to write. Therefore, write a story that you'll be proud of. Every obstacle in your life in the training is the training ground to become the individual you are destined to become. We are one FMS family. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Guinevere. So many words of advice, sage advice. Take responsibility for your learning. The starting point is desire. Really encouraging words. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm sorry, we'll move on to, <clears throat> I'm sorry, we'll move on to our farm D rep. Good morning, everyone. First, I'd like to make you guys welcome to the Faculty of Medical Sciences. Firstly, I'd like to extend congratulations to all the new students and being accepted into the University of West Indies. Also, I'd like to applaud you all and all the achievements you have made in order to get here. This is a huge step that you have taken in furthering your educational path towards your goal. Although this will be a new environment for you guys, being as you know, university is a new step, a great step forward in life. I implore you not to be startled by this change and to continue doing your best and never losing your, fo your focus. You may be faced 
whether it's a difficulties and distractions, but I advise you to never give up and keep in mind why you came here in the first place. In addition, this is an educational institution, but it's also a place for self-development and character building. You can also learn outside of your lectures as much as you learn in them. And there will be a plethora of opportunities, but it's only up to you not to let them pass you. Even though we are still facing um, the COVID-19 pandemic, you can still be involved in the quote-unquote university lifestyle and excel in your academics. However, there's a thin line between failing and thriving, and that involves determination and proper time management. Your first year is a year for setting the pace and standard for your life here at the university. Don't be afraid to step into the more social aspect of life because, of, because the stranger that you may meet, well, normally it would be beside you in a lecture theater. However, in this time, it would be that person that you meet in your online class, in the online class group chat and such. The person that you meet there will be a great help to you, maybe in the future, while studying for exams. And you can be a great help to them. Because here at the university, teamwork can be crucial in completing coursework and in studying and practicing for in courses and final examinations. Don't be afraid to get involved in extracurricular activities and be informed of the faculty staff members and the various student leaders, such as the reps as you see here today. We are here to help you. All right. I wish you all the best on your studies and your other endeavors and hope you have a seamless transition into this new space in this somewhat uncertain time. Remember to stay safe, work together while socially distancing, and to enjoy your time here at the university. Thank you, Mr. Danvers. So I hope that as you listened, you would see the pattern in all of the presentations from our student reps so far. They're encouraging you not just to study, they're encouraging you to study, they're encouraging you to study hard, but they're also saying that there is a life, there's a life beyond study at the university. It's not just about getting your degree, it's about becoming that whole, that complete person gaining friends, being a more disciplined person, being more wholesome. That's what coming to university is all about, not just about gaining your degree. So we are expecting some other student reps. They're currently not here. We're expecting a representative from the SMRT program, from the BB MedSci program and from, from nursing. They're however not here, so guess what? We are going to continue. And now we are going to, oh, BB Metzai, Rev is here, so I will ask that person to give the presentation now. Hey, good morning, everyone. I'm Renal I'm the Basic Medical Sciences representative for the academic year, and I must say congratulations to all the students who have successfully matriculated to the University of the West Indies. Uh, here you are on another leg of your academic pursuits. Uh, it's not going to be very easy, but it's not going to be too hard. <laughs> so uh, I hope you just apply the necessary study patterns, apply the necessary, the, the necessary level of focus and dedication to your program so that in the end, you'll actually get what, what you came here for. Uh, just to note, um, I've always been saying this to students. School is really a means to an end. You're here because you want to get to a particular point in your life. And so treat it as such. Uh, it should not be the sole focus of your life, but it should be among the priority items that you should uh, be looking at in terms of your daily activities. So 
continue to do your best. Continue to uh, get out there, get exposure. Build who you are as a person. Build your, your reputation. Uh, continue to strive for the things that you want to accomplish in terms of academics. And out, just outside of academics as well, other areas of your life that you want to accomplish. The university period is a part where you kind of start getting that introduction into adulthood. And so make the best of it. Uh, it is going to be a bit hard in terms of your studies for this academic year because of the unprecedented um, effects, you know, of the current um, pandemic. And so, you know, it's going to be a bit hard to, 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 to get that level of introduction when you were anticipating starting a, an exciting year at university. But nevertheless, the work must go on. And I wish you all the best in terms of your first year studies and all the best in the continuation of your degree program. And I just hope that each of you, not just come here and stick to yourself, but meet some persons in the, in the process. Uh, dialogue with some of your classmates. Form some, some groups that you can use across courses instead of just, you know, being here. You know, add that level of physical contact uh, to everyone. Um, and yeah, just have a great time here. Uh, and when I say physical contact, I don't mean the, 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 I mean, you know, be socially distant and continue to strive for what you, you, you really wish for in life. So all the best and uh, welcome to the University of the West Indies. Thank you, Mr. Ramsey. Okay, I'm going to ask the next rep that is here to come and give their welcome and greeting. So that's the rep from SMRT. Good morning, everyone. My name is Lassana Bruce, radiographer representative for this academic year. I just want to say welcome and congratulations to our new students on your enrollment in such a noble institution and uh, the Faculty of Medical Sciences. As you look to start your journey, um, I hope you will continue to shine, continue to make yourselves and family proud on your pursuit to greatness. Though we're in a, a challenging period, and we are trying to adjust to this new normal, I urge you all to condition your minds on the task ahead. As a student, it is important that you familiarize yourselves with the different reps. Do not be afraid to ask questions. Do not be afraid to ask for assistance. I encourage you also to explore the different opportunities the university has to offer. But just remember that your academic success is your top priority. So I hope you all have a, a terrific year. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bruce. I do believe those are all the reps we have present at this time. So we're going to we're going to move on. There are some questions that I will answer in a little. I'm making some queries, but there are some questions in the chat and I'll ask you to continue to post some questions. But until we're able to get the answers for those questions, we're going to move on. So the reason we're having this stream is because COVID a key, because normally we would be in a nice big lecture theater, seeing each other face to face, greeting and laughing and having fun, but COVID a key. So we're going to listen to the presentation from Dr. Alison Nicholson, and I'm sure she's going to be telling us how to live with COVID and how to manage and how to keep ourselves safe, as that is what we need to be doing at this time. Dr. Nicholson, please come. Please make her welcome. Good morning, everyone. Welcome again to the Faculty of Medical Sciences orientation session. Today I have 
a few minutes to talk to you about living with COVID. Because in true Jamaican terms, as was just said, COVID a keep, which when translated means COVID is happening. I'm not sure if anybody else in the audience has a more current interpretation of COVID a keep, but I think that one will work. Now, since it does not seem to have any plans to move immediately, we want you to be equipped to be around when it is gone, to complete your studies and to go make an impact on the world. Earlier this year, on the 7th of January to be precise, the whole world turned upside down. There was a cosmic shift and a virus suddenly thought it could rule the world. A train of events was set in motion that would divide the times in which we live into BC and AC. I'm sure you can guess what that means. Before COVID and after COVID. Now, this was the day that a disease due to a new type of coronavirus was identified. So on the 7th of January, the disease, the novel coronavirus causing this disease was identified. By the 12th of January, 2020, the genetic sequence was shared by China with World Health Organization. So they wasted no time in trying to decode this virus and to confirm that it was indeed a brand new virus. So they shared this genetic sequence with the WHO, which confirmed that it was not any of the usual respiratory pathogens, such as influenza, the different types of influenza, adenovirus, or even some other coronaviruses that had wreaked havoc, havoc some years before. Hence the quest started, what virus is this and how can we overcome this challenge? So far in Jamaica, total number of cases to about a day or two ago, 2,602 with only with 22 deaths. In Trinidad, 1,805 cases so far with 24 deaths. And in Barbados, 176 cases with seven deaths. Now, Balance this with what is happening worldwide, where there have been 25.3 million cases with 848,000 deaths. This is a serious time. And I want to help you to be equipped to go through your campus years, as long as it takes, being keeping one step ahead of the virus. I'll just share with you a few of the symptoms that one should be looking out for, or one should be aware of. And these symptoms may appear anywhere from two to 14 days after you have contracted the virus. Fever is a fairly common one. You don't always have to have it. As you can see from this screen, 44 to 98% of persons will have this. This is a wide range. Sore throat, cough, runny or stuffy nose. So these are you know, your respiratory tract symptoms, sometimes vague, sometimes pronounced. Another feature that is commonly mentioned is fatigue. People feel tired. As a matter of fact, in fact, people continue to feel tired even after um, they have, they're supposed to have recovered. Some persons have complained of headache. Shortness of breath, another respiratory associated feature, um, tends to also be common, but this tends to be more severe, of course, in the more acutely ill persons. Muscle pain, the usual viral picture. Some persons have a rash. Some persons have reported a discoloration of toes, leading to the term COVID toes. That has now become a thing in dermatology. Rigors, chills, um, loss of sense, and loss, loss of the sense of smell and taste. That also is something that has been highlighted in recent times. People just wake up and are unable to smell or unable to taste. That, if that happens to you, that should be a big um, clue. Persons will go on to have a, may go on to have a lower respiratory tract infection. And I also want to mention the gastrointestinal tract symptoms. I don't think that gets featured quite um, a lot. But persons can have vomiting and diarrhea. And one recent research actually showed that people who start out with vomiting and diarrhea as early manifestations tend to have more severe illness. Um, that's just something to note. So that's just giving you a snapshot of what being ill can look like and some of the symptoms that you should be aware of as you go through this period of COVID. Now, transmission, how is the virus transmitted? I want you to think about that. I'm going to share this with you, made specially for you.
Bad idea. Look at the good idea. Six feet apart. Right, so from that you would have seen that the portals of entry of the virus are the eyes, the nose, the mouth. And you're going to have to focus on these for the next many months. And let's not hope, and let's hope not years. So the eyes, you have to be, wear, be careful, try to protect the eyes where possible. The nose, cover, and the mouth, cover. Hence the emphasis on using a mask. Now you have this virus around. We don't know exactly where it is because of course we can't see it, but you do know enough about it. Studies have shown all that we need to know, well, much of what we need to know. So you, your main task for the next couple of months, ladies and gentlemen, your main task is to interrupt transmission of this virus. It might be out there, but it's not gonna get to you because you're doing the right things. The first thing I want to emphasize is social distancing. You have to reconfigure your need for space and increase it to six feet in this time, in this COVID era. The other day I was um, by a particular clinic and I saw some students huddled together and I went to them and I said, guys, remember social distancing. Can you just give me some space? Remember your social distance space? They just moved a few inches and they were quite comfortable. We're not talking about six inches here. We're talking about six feet. That's a long distance. And of course, if you are with family, we can't maintain that. So with family, we think that you can let down your guard and be sociable and you know, get the physical contact that you might need there. But when you go out in a crowd, try to measure yourself. Initially, it was said three feet. And the honest truth is that it's much easier to keep than six feet. But now we are being told that six feet is actually the ideal time. And I think that has to do with how far the virus can spread. While it's not being classified as an airborne virus, and it's being cl classified as something that moves in droplets, the studies have shown that the droplets for, for this virus go a little further than the usual droplets for viruses like influenza. So hence the six feet distance that you're being asked to take. So always do a mental check when you're in a crowd and move away. You will find plenty of space to the periphery because for some reason, people just like to huddle together in the middle. You just take your six feet check and move to where you can maintain that. The other thing that you can do to interrupt transmission is respiratory etiquette. So if you have to sneeze or cough, try not to do it in your hands. And if you do, then immediately wash your hands, perform hand hygiene. So as best as possible, have your tissue, you sneeze or cough into your tissue, you discard the tissue and you still perform hand hygiene. So we've called hand hygiene quite a bit and that's because it is so important. Um, I will tell you more about this as we go along. And then the mask, you're going to hear so much about masks because of the role, the central role that it plays in protecting you. Now, what does distancing mean? You will have to, you will have to reconfigure your life. As I said, we knew it back then has changed. And at least until we gain mastery over this um, SARS-CoV-2, as the name of the virus is, and we have a vaccine or it just, um, mutates and disappears, then we will have to put in the measures necessary to triumph over this virus. So let's take a quick look at some of the typical campus scenes and reconfigure your space based on that. Classes, you can, you can no longer, where there are physical, where you go into a physical space, it can't be beside each other. You know, in the Jamaican term, you can't hitch up beside each other. And those who are not Jamaicans will learn what that means pretty soon. So you space out to maintain a reasonable distance. What about your study groups? The courses that you do, I used to have a lot of study groups because you know it made studying easier. Some persons prefer to do it alone. But what if you're in a study group? You can't be in each other's faces. And guess what? Within that study group, you must have on your mask. No study group without mask. Anybody who turns up for the study group without a mask, then let them know that they cannot be a part of the study group. And by the way, I do have my mask here. I've just taken it off for the purpose of this presentation. Movies. Perhaps you should put a hold on that for now, but just in case you are brave enough to go, just make sure that you're in a space 
that is comfortable and uh, comfortable for you and uncomfortable for the virus. If somebody comes and breaches that, that distance that you have decided on, then you just need to move and find another space. And if you can't find that space, then you need to leave the theater. Eating out, many persons have opted not to eat out anymore because of the variable exposure that can happen there. So you need to plan, is there a place that you can safely go where you know your exposure won't be um, unpredictable? And if not, then you need to, you perhaps can rush in, get the food and then go back home and eat at home. And of course, just chilling falls under that category as well. Continuing with social distancing, and I'm pressing social distancing because it's so difficult. Sometimes I'm in a line, for example, and it's only after a while I realize, oops, I'm too close to this person in a line in a bank, although the bank is now giving you seats um, that are spread apart, you know, at the required distance. Um, but wherever you are, just be conscious of the fact that nobody should be encroaching on your space. Now, this six feet space is much larger than we're accustomed to, and perhaps even much larger than we're comfortable with because we want persons a little closer. But for the purposes of coronavirus and defeating this virus, we must be constantly reconfiguring our space and becoming comfortable with this six feet space. So no hugs, no kisses, you know, it's new term and you're coming back. It's only air hugs and air kisses. No real hugs, no kisses. The close contact, elbow bump. That's as far as you can go with the contact, elbow bump. No gossiping, you know, that nice juicy after holiday gossiping. No gossiping face to face. I really should say no gossiping period, but this is not malicious gossip. It's just sharing the events of the summer, but that no face to face, um, lean close, let me tell you something, gossiping. Parties, you know, those are limited. As a matter of fact, those should be on taboo, but there, are, there is permission for limited numbers of persons to, to gather in celebration of an event, but the numbers are definitely limited for protocol to be followed. And lunchtime, small groups only. Perhaps if you want to meet other persons, then you can vary the small groups. So it's not just the same small group day after day. You want to meet other members of the class, join another small group for lunch um, with their permission, of course. But you can't enlarge your group to uh, increase your interaction. I mentioned respiratory etiquette, so this is just dramatically um, demonstrating that. So then we move to hand hygiene. Hand hygiene, hand hygiene, hand hygiene. You must be tired of washing your hands or tired of rubbing your hands. You now have an alternative to soap and water and I'm sure that most of you already know that and you're walking around with your alcohol-based hand sanitizer. But let me officially tell you on behalf of the Faculty of Medical Sciences, which has actually produced its own alcohol-based hand sanitizer, and you can make yourself known to the powers that be to see how you can get some of this hand sanitizer or how you can purchase some of this hand sanitizer depending on the terms and conditions. So um, the international organizations have declared the alcohol-based hand sanitizer to be as effective or even more effective than soap and water. Now I know that persons are hung up on soap and water because that's the traditional method. However, you can clean your hands using alcohol-based hand sanitizer. With, with alcohol concentration being at least 70%. Many of the bottles that you will purchase from the pharmacy have a 65% alcohol concentration. That can work, but the next time you buy one, just look at the back to see the, look at the alcohol concentration and opt for one that's 70% or higher. Um, just remember though that you shouldn't depend on an alcohol-based hand sanitizer if your hands are visibly soiled or if you have just used the bathroom or if you're in any environment where there's an outbreak of diarrhea, then the alcohol-based hand sanitizer will not work and you have to go to soap and water. Now with your soap and water, of course, you have to have access to soap, access to running water. And with this, the mantra is the solution to pollution is dilution. So you rub your hands under the, with the soap and then the water washes off. Um, the, soap and, the soap doesn't necessarily have magical powers, but the mechanical action and the water will move away the germs. So get, become friendly, always have your hand sanitizer with you. Somebody coughs or sneezes and you're not sure how close it came to your hand, hand sanitizer. You're going up, a, um, up the stairs and you held onto the rail. You don't know which, who came before you and who was holding onto the rail, hand sanitizer. So think hand sanitizer in everything you do. Somebody borrows your pen and your pencil, preferably don't lend. So I'm telling the entire class, try to keep your pen and pencil personal. And the other items that people borrow, can I borrow your phone? Nope. Can I borrow your pen or pencil? But if you do, if you do, 
if the milk of kindness runs through you, then lend, but then remember to wipe off the item immediately. So somebody borrows your pen, you take it back and you sanitize. You wipe off the pen and you wipe off your hands with your 70% alcohol. This is how you will have to be thinking, constantly evaluating this, the situation to see, could I have gotten something here? Masks, no, that has become even fa um, fashionable. Have you noticed the kinds of masks that are around? Fancy colors, fancy styling, little stitching. You can even get your initials on them. So those are usually the cloth masks. So let me burst your bubble a little bit. The cloth mask doesn't really protect you if it's just a plain cloth mask, but it's still useful because it protects other persons. So that cloth mask provides source control. So it keeps the virus in and it if you have the virus, it keeps it in and it prevents it from going out to the next person. So if you're wearing a cloth mask and I'm not, I will say to you, thank you very much, you're protecting me. But if I'm not wearing a cloth mask, then I'm putting you at risk to what I might have. So can we all mask up? Let's get our masks, whatever shape or type, put on our masks so that we can protect ourselves and we can protect our, our friends, our colleagues, um, other people. Now, if you have the special cloth mask and there's a doctor who has actually been doing work on this and you put a salt filter, and that's easy. If you look up the reference, you might see he came out in the newspaper, an article was there with details on how to do this. So if you put salt in a, in a wrap salt in a, in, a, in a piece of cloth, and insert it in the, in the mask, the cloth mask, then that salt acts as a filter and then is transformed into a mask that will protect the person in front of you as well as yourself. The surgical mask that has a filter in it, and that's, <clears throat> sorry, that's like the one I showed you there. So this one has a filter, so this one will protect me and it will protect you. And of course, there are other masks such as your N95, KN95, Kimberly Clark, you don't need to know these until you're going into clinical situations. So once you start to do clinical work and you start to have to interact with patients or you're in the hospital healthcare setting often, then you might want to know a little bit more about these. They are scarce, so try not to run for the top ones just because they sound like they're the top ones. They're scarce, they're expensive. If we use them unnecessarily, we will be without when we really need them. So these are for when you're going into challenging situations, like you're going to be intubating somebody, person is being nebulized, then you know that that might generate an aerosol. And so you want a high level mask for this. Just walking around the hospital without any of these um, actions, you can wear your ordinary surgical mask, which is what I wear every day. And then of course, there are more exotic, exotic filtering face piece respirators, which take this protection up to another level and are for special indications. Just look at this to, um, to underscore my point. In this first picture here, neither person is wearing a mask. So there's a 90% risk of transmission of COVID, SARS-CoV-2 virus, that's a virus, okay? COVID is a disease and SARS-CoV-2 is the name of the virus that causes the disease. This one is a 30% risk of transmission. So this person does not have on a mask. So whatever he, or he has will be coming out. But because you have on a mask, you have reduced your risk from 90% to just 30%. Now, this person, this person has on a mask, so he is containing the virus, and that will reduce your risk even more. Of course, if both persons have on a mask, then no matter what is coming from here, the risk, you will, it's unlikely that you will get anything because you have on your mask, so you're also protecting yourself. And that reduces the risk to 1.5%, um, the risk of transmission. Of course, the ideal situation is if both of you have on masks, then it's almost zero. I don't like to say zero, but it's almost zero risk. Oh no, I'm sorry. Both of you have on masks. And then the additional factor is that you're practicing social distancing. And the reason they say 0% risk is that this virus is not technically an airborne virus. So it shouldn't be comfortable going this kind of distance. Now, this is just to give you a little peep of what happens in the hospital setting when you have to be more um, more serious, um, more drastic in your preventative measures. So we would remind you of this term, personal protective equipment, shortened as PPE, and you'll be hearing that in your ears for the rest of your life, not just even in training. And particularly now, when personal protective equipment has become so, so central 
to the healthcare worker, which all of you are. And this is just to show you that even though you might know masks, you might know goggles and so on, there are different recommendations for when you use that. When would you use your surgical mask alone? When will you use add goggles? And when would you use, use goggles as well or a visor, either or? And this is not for you now, but it's just to kind of open up your understanding and help you to know that the use of the PPE is not as simple as it looked and looks, but it is far more complex and it requires getting familiar. Now, we talked a little bit about this before, and I just want to highlight it again. You know, um, it, eating out. Again, you have to be thinking of the surfaces and you have to be thinking of the people that you're interacting with secretions from the respiratory tract, unintentional contact. Do you come in contact with a waitress, the waiter? Did they give you something? What's going on? You really don't know. So you just take the precautions that you must. And I just want to stick in one here and that's bus travel. So if you have to travel on the bus, you know, the public transport, that's a little bit more challenging. So you have to be very careful. We know that bus travel doesn't really give you any protection. In, well, I understand, and this is from asking a couple persons, the public transport, they try, and in some cases, they actually give you alternate seats, but that does not really fit the criteria. It's better than nothing, but it's not ideal. I'm not sure what UWI is doing about transport, so I will leave that for somebody else, but it is something to consider, especially for those persons who are not Jamaicans and who might want to go, um, you know, Discover Kingston, there are rules and regulations that you should consider for your own good and for the good of others. Now, should it happen, it, the big it, God forbid, should you become infected? It's important to inform somebody. So from the new, from the very onset of symptoms, the very beginning of symptoms, inform someone. You know, I think I feel like I'm having a fever. As a matter of fact, Wherever you are living, there should, if you're in a dorm setting, um, there should be a policy instituted Good morning, where everyone. you, I'm sorry about Just that. You that One second, let me disconnect. In the department at this time. So. I'm sorry about that, intercom notice, just disconnected. Okay, so you should at least be policing person's temperature. Is there a central point? If you're in a, you know, a flat with two bedrooms, is there a central point where it is, and you record the temperature that you have. So every day, each person's temperature is recorded. New page, new day, temperature is recorded. Note any increase in temperature and use that as a warning that further action should be taken. It is something simple and yet it can be so in, you know, useful. In one, of, in one situation that I'm aware of, one person had an increased temperature detected at one of our hospital checkpoints. And the person didn't think it was a big deal, but just to say that further on to that, um, simple, simple rise in temperature, the person was found to be COVID positive. So be aware of that and use that simple intervention. If you know that you have become positive, you have tested positive, then try to isolate yourself as much as possible. You might need to change the situation. If you're from Jamaica, you might want to go home. If you're not from Jamaica, then that's not going to be possible. So inform your colleagues, the persons, your housemates, and then see how you can form an isolation area. What I would say to you is that it might be a good idea from now, if you're in a flat situation, you know, um, apartment situation for want of a better description, that you come together and say, what, will, what would we do if one person becomes positive? I've walked around my own house looking, now where would an isolation area be should someone in my family become positive? Can I have a place where we can change and then enter the room and then discard clothes, you know, things that you've worn, you, you know, et cetera, et cetera. It, it does, it's not difficult and I'm sure if you reach out for help, one of us can help you. Um, we talked about investigating, I believed, I believe. I, I can tell you more about getting tested, but I'll run over that in, term, in the interest of time. And also remember that you have resources around you. You have the University Health Center. Um, Dr. Blossom Anglin Brown is there, and I'm sure that she would be willing to um, provide help in whatever way she can. University Hospital is there. And of course, you're in the Faculty of Medical Sciences, so you should be able to get a quick consult, perhaps quicker than others.
Now, what about psychosocial support? As I said before, this is a very challenging time. We've never been through a time like this. Our whole world has turned topsy-turvy and we have to just make, and make all the effort that we can to adjust to the challenges that we're facing and come out on top, come out stronger, come out victorious, come out feeling like you can't be conquered because you're here to conquer the world as it were. So you're feeling down and you need to just de-stress. Take some time by yourself, pause, breathe, reflect. And of course, I'm always going to recommend prayer because that is and can be a source of strength. Connect with others, but only in a way that is good for you. So phone, Zoom might become your new best friend because of all the, the facilities that it offers. Stick to a healthy routine. Don't neglect your exercise. You can um, factor exercise into your daily routine. And this is actually very important. Be kind to yourself and be kind to others. If this is not your normal nature, your normal disposition, then try and change that as much as possible. And guess what? Call for help if you need it. This is a time when we need each other. And if you need help, call for it. Don't hold back. So I think I have gone through most of the components. I've told you steps and things to do to be able to um, protect yourself and also to protect others. I want you to be preemptive. Don't wait until something happens, but have a plan to prevent things from happening and have a plan if anything happens. Identify your resource persons on the campus, persons who you can call at short notice and get some up to the minute advice. And so I'm now going to close with a message, a special message from the Prime Minister of Jamaica. The coronavirus cannot move around by itself. If we control our movement, we can control the spread. If you do not have urgent matters to attend to, stay at home. If you have a cough, sneeze, sniffle, fever, stay at home. If you like symptoms of any respiratory illness, stay at home. If you do not have urgent matters to attend, stay at home. By order under the Disaster Risk Management Act, stay at home. If you must go to the market, make, make, a, make a list and shop by. Do not stay longer than necessary. Make a list and shop by. Avoid touching surfaces. Avoid crawls and standing close to people using a mask or a scarf. Cover those up. If you have a cough, sneeze, sniffle, fever, stay at home. If you like symptoms of any respiratory illness, stay at home. <laughs> And by your yard, I order under the disaster risk management. Stay at home. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. All the best. Thank you, Dr. Nicholson, for that very informative presentation, just highlighting some of the things we would have learned or would have seen over time because COVID has been with us and it has been keeping for a little while though. I don't know how many of you were over there dancing, but every time the Prime Minister said, stay at home, I was just doing a little jig, stay at home. And I hope you are remembering to stay at home unless you really need to be outside of your home and then remembering all those tips that Dr. Nicholson gave us. Thank you so very much, Dr. Nicholson, for that presentation. We're going to move on with our program and we will now have a presentation by Carisha Larmond from the Commuting Students Office. Now, you know, before COVID, we realized that not all students were going to be living on campus because some of them are from Kingston and St. Andrew area. And so they didn't have to live on hall and so, but we wanted them to still be involved in hall life. So they would join commuting students. But of course, now, you know, a lot of you will be at home, but we still want to hear about commuting students and what that has to offer. So I'm going to invite Ms. Larmon to now give her presentation. Make her welcome, please. Okay, so good morning, everyone. I am going to try to share screen. So, um, we can get into the presentation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
All right, I'm not getting this um, presentation up, but all right, let me continue without it. Okay, so welcome my virtual Pelicans. I know, for example, you are not coming to campus this um, semester, so you will be virtual with us for this semester and probably the next. So I'd like to say welcome my virtual Faculty of Medical Sciences Pelican, and I am so glad you are here with us today. So virtual engagement is nothing new to you as new Pelicans. And so I know that we are in your realm and your world. And so I know, you know, most of our students, if um, are between Gen Z's, you know, 90, um, you born 1996 to about 2015, or you're a millennial, um, you know, 1980s to about 1996, thereabouts. So this is kind of your world, you know, you're the Gen Zs are more digital natives, while the millennials are tech savvy as well. So I say that to say that, you know, we are in your world engaging you. And I just wanna, say thank you for allowing us to engage you in your world and know that we're there. We actually want you to allow us to engage you in an intentional and transformative way. So I implore, implore you to take some, some of our wisdom and blend with your adaptive and creative minds to be change agents in this world. So after your three to five year journey with us, I expect that you won't be the same, right? And so the commuting students office um, will be one of the avenues to keep you informed, engaged, and connected at UA. We're definitely gonna keep you on ice at UA, informed, engaged, and connected. So I say welcome, welcome, welcome to the UWI. And I hope that you will learn from us as we learn from you on this journey. I want to share, I wanted to share with you my team. Um, I'm gonna try to share screen again because I really want you to see the team of advisors, see our faces um, so that you can interact with us, get to know our platforms or different platforms that we have. We have Instagram pages, we have um, we have an Instagram page, we have a social media page, and we also have a website that you can go on and see everything that you need to know about the Commuting Students Office. And this year, we definitely have a virtual support team in the form of grad students who are your Commuting Student Advisors, myself and the administrative assistant in the office to guide you on this journey and support you to the max to make sure that you succeed and thrive within this environment. And so some of the programs that we have that are now virtual are our time management and self-management sessions or vision board sessions where you can get involved and just um, put yourselves together. We know your home, we know sometimes you get distracted, but we're gonna try to help you to make sure that everything happens seamlessly. So I want you to join us on our social media pages and all our pages are at uimona underscore CSO or at uimona CSO. And if you go to our, the UWI website and you type in commuting students office, it will take you directly to our um, website, which will give you all the information about the office and how we can help you. We have a robust administrative team. So if you send us emails, you will get a response within 24 hours and we see how we can link you to different resources on campus and we can get you the help that you need. So since my screen is not sharing still, <laughs> I am going to just tell you a little bit about what you can get engaged in. And so you can go and seek them out on our pages when we upload those information. 
So one thing is, and that's applicable to you and you will have fun. I ensure you, you will be fully engaged is our service learning and civic engagement program. And that program is totally online this year. And what our service learning and civic engagement program will help you with is networking with NGOs outside of UAE and other institutions that you can volunteer with online. Get service hours online, help persons to do campaigns to bring awareness to certain things. COVID is happening now. Some organizations want to teach students and children how to wash their hands properly. I implore you to get involved with our Change Maker program. We have different badges in the program. We also train you how to start your own NGOs and how to do grant funding. A lot is in store. So look out on our social media pages when you follow us for the Change Maker program and see how you can sign up. The next thing that we have within the Commuting Students Office is our Commuter Care Initiative. And so that program will really help you as commuters. And what we do is partner with our um, business and corporate entities to help commuters who are in need. So I would want you to know that last year, uh, we would have helped at least 200 commuting students during the COVID time when they were at home with groceries. We had partners like Grace, um, Lasco, Hilo, um, Libres. So students would be getting packages in their home. And no, it's not just in Kingston. We had packages going to even St. Thomas, Savlamar, West um, Montego Bay, and so many different parishes because you know we have a Western Jamaica campus in Montego Bay. So we, have our, we had those packages going out to help our commuters because we know even though you're at home, you are still in so much need. So we have a commuter care package and look out for that. Applications will open soon where we can help you. The next thing is that we have an administrative support that is none, um, next to none. What happens with our administrative support is that, you know, your faculties, sometimes you can't get through to your lecturers to do like a referee affidavit when you're applying for a scholarship or a grant from um, the institution. And so we are here to help you to get those linkages. And we also signed up the documents for you. Or we can provide you with a JP who can do that for you. So we're linking you to resources on campus. And even though you're not here with us in the physical space, we still reach out to you in, your, in the virtual space. Uh, I just want to say that I am so happy you are here with us and congratulations in being a part of the Pelican team. Uh, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's a really, really rewarding experience. And I take so much from our student leaders that spoke to you this morning about how how rewarding it was for them, or it is for them. You know, they, they developed endurance. They, get, they got involved on campus. You know, the, com the committees. I say to you, join a committee, get involved. We have developmental activities that will help you to shine and burst out of those shells that you are in. So don't worry that you're virtually connected. You will be connected more than ever through the Commuting Students Office and through your different guild representatives and also through your FMS family. So welcome again and thank you for having me and just enjoy the, the, um, <laughs> the whole package that UWI have, have to offer. So I tell you again, come and follow us on our social media pages. We are at you and Mona underscore CSO and you will get all the information that you will need to help you thrive and succeed in this virtual environment. Take care and um, stay safe. Thank you.
Thank you, Ms. Larman, for that very spirited and comprehensive presentation. Sorry I couldn't get your, your presentation going, but you know, that happens with the technology sometimes. So I liked it on ice, informed, connected, engaged. So I hope that all of you over there are staying informed, connected, and I really hope you're engaged, even though I can't see you. And even though, well, you can see me, I can't see you, but I hope you are enjoying the package that we have put together for you between yesterday and today. And there are a few more days, there are a few more days to come. Before we continue with our program, I just wanted to say a little bit about registration. I know there have been some questions in the chat. So generally registration information and assistance with registration will be provided by the individual programs and they will give you information for the assistance you will receive for those various times. But just to say that for the MBBS students, JAMSA will be assisting you with registration guidance on Friday, and I do believe there is some assistance for the dentistry students, DDS, this afternoon, and a member of their administration will assist you with that. That is after the program in the section that says registration assistance at one. So we're going to continue with our program, and we're now going to hear from uh, someone in the UECERT, and UECERT is the UWI Student Emergency Response, response Team. Help me welcome the person from UE CERT. Hi, good morning, everyone. Can you hear me properly? I guess, I guess not. I guess you'll let me know. Um, good morning again. My name is, um, my name is Keenan Clark. I am the of the West Indian Student Emergency Response Team. And we're just here to share um, a little bit about ourselves, what we do, who we are, and just in, um, in our own way, kind of welcome you guys as well um, into the marketing communication student at Carrymark, which is kind of funny. Most people wouldn't expect somebody um, in my degree to be a part of CERT, but it's something that we try to encourage in CERT that not only persons who are directly interested in the medical faculty can get involved in us. So, CERT was established in 2004. We have been in operation for about 16 years now. We are the only student-run emergency response team in the Western Hemisphere, and that's something that we are very proud of and we boast a lot about um, because we are the only one. Um, we also boast membership from not only the Faculty of Med uh, Medical Sciences, which we do have membership from, but also from science and technology, humanities, I'm a humanities student, and so on. And we usually love to encourage persons from the medical, um, from, from medside to come and um, spend some time with us, even though we know that by the time you hit the third year or so of your program, you're essentially um, very busy. But it's, it's awesome because the transfer of knowledge that we get from medical science persons to humanities persons and so on by a training and just the camaraderie that we build is really good. So um, I don't want to keep you guys too long, but our training is usually a two week training process. Um, and this includes an exam and a physical component. And throughout this process, you would be able to learn um, rapid extraction to rapid extraction and safe extraction of patients, basic first aid, CPR, C-spine um, immobilization, dealing with head and musculoskeletal sportal injuries, and so on. It is very intensive, I won't lie. Um, however, I don't think anybody who has trained with us has ever regretted coming to train with us. And we are very active on campus when campus was a thing. And we will still be trying to find ways to interact with the campus and so on in the virtual sphere since it's most likely going to be our reality for a long time, but if campus life does quote unquote resume to normal, you would see us on 
campus work in sporting events, parties, and so on, and we take a lot of pride in ensuring that the persons that are on campus are taken care of. So um, that's basically just a little bit about us. If you want to keep up with us, you can follow us at UECERT, and if you're interested in becoming a partner with us and so on and so forth, you can check out our website as well. Um, but just behalf, on behalf of UECERT and the team, we are wishing you an amazing tenure at the University of the West Indies, and we hope that some of you would join us and come and join our team. So I hope you have an amazing day and continue to enjoy the rest of your orientation. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Clark, for your presentation. We're going to be moving on to our next presentation, which will come to us from Miss Yolanda Paul. And Yolanda is going to talk to us about sexual harassment and you. Very serious, very serious issue. Miss Paul, over to you. Hi, good morning, everyone. Can you hear me clearly? I just wanna make sure. Yes, we can hear you clearly. Yes, you can. Okay, I'm going to share my screen in a second, but good morning, everyone, and welcome to the University of the West Indies. I know that when you were perhaps applying for admission, you never thought we'd be in this phase where we have to do orientation online, but it's a new normal and we'll get used to it. Um, I know that I have limited time here, so I'm going to share very quickly with you some key information you need to know um, about sexual harassment. And I want you to remember, I'm not sharing this in the context of you being part of medical faculty. I'm sharing this because these are, this is information to help you in your everyday life because sexual harassment is not limited to an environment. So let me just quickly share my screen, hoping it works, yeah? Give me one second because I'm not good with technology. And share, just let me know if you're seeing it. Um, can you see it well? We're seeing the screen, we are. Okay, great. So in this presentation, I'm going to quickly take us through what is sexual harassment, the types of sexual harassment, and how do we cope with sexual harassment? And again, I want you to remember that I'm not just giving you this for you, for yourself as a student. This is a life, this is a life conversation. It can happen to you in any space, anywhere. So when we talk about sexual harassment, what do we mean? We are talking about something that is an unwelcomed behavior of a sexual nature. And of course, we know that when we talk about something that is unwelcomed, we mean something that we do not want. We don't want it at all. It does not make us feel comfortable. And we know within ourselves that we do not want that discomfort in our space. And I remember last day when I was giving this, converse, uh, giving this presentation to the previous year group, uh, Dr. Crawford Sykes, who you probably all know, she made a statement in my conversation with her and I quoted her again this year because I think it's very, very important for you to hear it. She said, I always tell my students, once you start feeling uncomfortable, you know something is wrong. Many times we are sexually harassed and we don't even know. Sexual harassment is not limited to a profession. It is not limited to an environment. It can happen between male to male, female to female, male to female. It does not matter. It happens every day. And I think that in my own conversations with our students over the years, People are sexually harassed and they actually do not even know that they're being sexually harassed. So one of the things I wanted to bring up as part of the sexual harassment conversation is the difference between flirting and sexual harassment. Now, I know that we're in a new environment and even though we are doing a lot of things remotely, you are going to be seeing your colleagues and your, your, your friends at some point in time. And... Uh, we sometimes flirt and we sometimes flirt and enjoy it with someone else and it's reciprocated. The difference between flirting and sexual harassment is that flirting happens between two consenting people. So two people have decided, oh, we like each other, it's just a friendly flirt and we're just flirting. So for example, your friend may say to you, why do you look so hot today? How do you dress up so today? You know, nice little flirting. And you may respond to that and you're comfortable with that. 
that is flirting. That is where you are in control. You're comfortable with what's happening and you're managing that situation. But sexual harassment is on the other end of that, of that scenario. It is where you do not feel comfortable at all with anything that person may be saying about you may be doing and you certainly are not reciprocating or returning that kind of feeling towards them. And I want us to remember that because as we focus on our bodies, because you're in a new space and in an environment, and a lot of you may be dealing with relationships for the first time, maybe talking about sex for the first time, maybe exploring your bodies. As we talk about those things, we need to always remember, we should always do things that make us comfortable. I can't drill that in enough for you to understand the power of comfort. If something does not make you comfortable, you need to address it, you need to say it. So if somebody is saying or doing something to you of a sexual nature and you do not like it, you need to say outrightly that you don't like it. I should have said at the beginning of this, I am very, um, I'm okay with persons putting com um, questions in the chat. And at the end, I'm going to take some questions as well. So if you have anything, please write it down. I would love that kind of engagement at the end, all right? So sexual harassment, I hope you understand the difference between flirting and sexual harassment. When we flirt, we know what we're doing, we're consenting to it, it's playful, it's good, we're consenting and we're comfortable. But sexual harassment is something we're totally not comfortable with, we do not want to condone it, and therefore we want to say to the person we don't want it. So let's delve into a little bit about the different types of sexual harassment. So we have four different types of sexual harassment. We have verbal, visual, written, and physical conduct, all of which can happen to you at any point in time. It's not that one alone can happen to an individual, okay? So let's discuss the verbal phase. So what is a verbal? Verbal are behaviors, for example, saying something out loud. So we go to, we're in a classroom, for example, and we're doing a lab, we're engaged in a lab. And there is a gentleman who likes a girl and I'm going to use the girl's name as Yolanda, which is my name. So the gentleman likes Yolanda. But I am not paying the gentleman any attention and the gentleman is saying to his male friend, oh, she look goody, oh, she looks so hot and his shirt tight up, tight up. These are things that he's saying about me even though he's not saying it directly to me, he's saying it about me, he's verbalizing it. And that is sexual harassment. You can say it to somebody directly, or he may come to me at a party and be like, Yolanda, how you look so good and you look so sexy in that dress. But I don't want that kind of approach from him. I don't want that kind of conversation from him. So because I don't want it and he's doing it, that's verbal sexual harassment. Because he's either saying it to me, he's saying it out loud in a space in which I am involved. He's saying it to other people, who may not necessarily be directly around me, or he's saying it to people who are in my space. Again, things that are being said of a sexual nature that I do not want. I hope I haven't lost you. I hope I'm being clear. So that's verbal. So what are some examples of verbal very quickly? Again, sexual comments about a person's body, repeatedly asking someone on a date. And I know that we all do that eh? because I do not want us to think that males harass sexual females only. We females harass our males as well. And we need to be careful what we say and how we say it. And there are some people who are always harassing us about going out on a date or about seeing us after school or why we don't want to go out with them. I'm sure you guys have experienced that at some point or will experience that at some point. So you also have whistling you know, sometimes you, you walk by and somebody whistles you or in Trinidad, we say somebody suits you, which is the same thing as cat calling or making kissing sounds. Um, you may be in your lab or you may be in your classroom, you may be in your Zoom like we are now and somebody's private messaging you about inappropriate sexual conversations. Um, somebody may be telling you about their sex life or their sex fantasies and you have never asked about it, neither do you want it. Another thing that we do that is verbal and can be perceived as verbal sexual harassment is calling people honey, sweetie, baby. 
And I know that as a Trinidadian lady, sometimes we Trinis are a little um, guilty of that. We don't mean anything by it, but it is something as part of our language that we use from time to time. So we have to be a little um, careful. And of course, inappropriate compliments. All of these things are said to us or said around us or said about us, right? So that's verbal. Let's move very quickly to visual. You know, we define sexual, we define visual sexual harassment as an assault to a person's sight. I find it a very interesting definition. So what does that mean? It is about looking at somebody and you can tell from the person's body language, the person who's looking at you, that they are looking at you in a sexual manner. They're sexualizing you. So examples of visual, of visual would be obscene gestures or looks. So sometimes you may go in a party and you walk in and you're with your girlfriends. Oh, let me use, let me use, let me use um, the gentleman as an example. You guys may walk in with all your brethren and you just walk into the party and you're looking around and you scan in this space and you may see some girls standing off at a table. And there may be one particular girl who you can tell from her facial expression is looking at you. She is looking at you from head to toe, which we call elevator eyes. You can see that she's trying to get your attention. You can see she's winking or she may suit you or she may throw kisses or from her facial expression, you can tell it is more than just wanting to say hi to you. It could also be making sexual gestures with hands or through body movements. You may be in your labs, you may be in your classrooms, you may be walking from um, medical faculty to juicy parties to get something. And people may be staring at you in a way that makes you again feel uncomfortable. That is what visual sexual harassment is. Let me stop at this point. Is there anybody who has a burning question so far that I can quickly, quickly take? I'm mindful of time. Anyone, you can unmute very quickly. No? Okay. All right, so let me go very quickly to uh, verbal. Again, I'm sorry, I made an error in the slide. This should be physical, what is it? So physical, unwelcome touching or grabbing. Again, unwelcome, you do not want it, guys. You're not asking for it, you do not want it. It's very unwelcomed. Unwelcomed touching or grabbing. So examples of physical, examples of physical sexual harassment would be unwelcome touching or grabbing. So for example, you may be in your lab and the lady may stretch over to get a Bunsen burner or she may stretch over to get a pen and she may brush you. That is unwelcome. And she may do it more than once. That's an unwelcome gesture. That's physical. Somebody may walk up to you and they're casually talking to you and they're running their hands on your arm or they're running your hands on your back, you may be on ward. You may be a doctor on ward and you may be going around on your wards and somebody may come to you. It could be another doctor, a nurse, a patient, anybody. And they are touching you in a way that's inappropriate. That's physical sexual harassment. So also somebody who is always looking at your physical being. So every day they make a compliment or they say something about how you look. That's also physical sexual harassment. And again, touching. So we have to be very, very careful how we communicate with persons and how we um, interact with persons and how we touch persons. And we also need to make sure that people are comfortable with the way we're communicating with people. So that is physical conduct. And I know that from time to time, we have a lot of conversations in our Jamaican space, especially on Twitter, when issues come up in a public space about sexual harassment, and you would hear a lot of people sharing stories. Now, one of the things that you should probably know is that sexual harassment is not written into our law books. So it is not identified as something that is illegal, so to speak, or can be charged, but it is unwarranted and we do not want it. Again, it makes us uncomfortable. So very quickly, I'm just, I just put up these two slides from two persons who were talking about sexual harassment. So the first person said, imagine a man telling you your breast then looks stiff and he more suck them off, thinking he's giving you a compliment and you should be grateful. And I know that there are a lot of people who think that those things are compliments. And I think that maybe over time as part of culture, because we have never corrected persons who say these things to us and never said to them that we're uncomfortable, they just think it's normal. 
But ladies and gentlemen, it is very, very important. If someone says something to you, does something to you that makes you uncomfortable, it is very important to articulate to them and to tell them that you are uncomfortable with it. All right? And let me address very quickly the social space. We are now fully into a social space. She needs a bottle. Sorry, guys. If you're hearing a baby in the background, that's my baby and she's crying. So we're in a social space. And as you connect with your friends in a year group, you're going to connect with them across all social media pages. Now, in this social space, people may argue and say, oh, but I told her something. I wasn't harassing her. I just tell her she looked good or her profile picture on WhatsApp looked good. Again, if you don't want that from that person and you don't like the comments that the person is making, even about your profiles on social media, then you need to say to them, thank you, but I would really appreciate if you do not comment about those things. Guys, can you give me one second? Yes, it's okay, but you need to add some, a little hot water to it. Forgive me, this is the life of a working mom. So in your social media space, people may crawl into your WhatsApp. You know, people are always sliding into your DMs because you look good. They see you at a party or they see you at class and they don't want to talk to you or they see you on the Zoom and they don't want to talk to you. But they slide into your DMs and they start a conversation. And what they're saying to you may be very of a sexual nature, maybe over complimenting you. Um, it may be over complimenting your physical body. It may be making you feel uncomfortable because they're asking you out and they're always wanting to know where you are and what you're doing. All of those things are considered sexual harassment because they are of a sexual nature. If you're not comfortable with it, you need to say to the person you're not comfortable with it. Now, I know I have run through this very, very quickly, but I am available for you to, to, talk, to, for you to talk to me about it a little bit more. I want to go very quickly now with how do we cope with sexual harassment? And I have put about five tips here for you that I want you to take note of. Remember so far we have covered and we have said sexual harassment is unwelcomed behavior of a sexual nature. It's unwelcomed, you don't want it. So if somebody's making you uncomfortable and they're saying things of a sexual nature that you do not like, therefore you need to be able to cope with it. So how do you cope with it? You need to trust the instincts. If it makes you uncomfortable, it makes you uncomfortable. Don't second guess it, all right? You need to articulate your feelings. So if Peter comes to me and he has been saying inappropriate things to me and I am uncomfortable, I need to be able to say, Peter, I'm really sorry. I do not appreciate what you've been saying to me and I would appreciate if you don't speak to me in that manner or use that kind of sexual language. You have said it to him, so he is now aware that you are uncomfortable. If he continues to do it, then he knows that he's intentionally sexually harassing you because you have communicated that you do not want it. See? So articulate your feelings. And write it down. Because you may talk to Peter now and Peter will stop. But then a couple of days later, Peter may start again. So write it down so that you have a log of what's going on. And again, you need to talk to your sexual harassment advisor. One of the things I would advise you guys to do, we have a health center at the University of the West Indies and we have a counselor in there and she's also a sexual harassment advisor. She's your sexual harassment advisor. Her name is Dr. Debbie Ann Chambers. Um, I did not have her email address here, but I can get it to you so that you can always contact her. All right, but she's based at the UB Health Center. So talk to your, talk to your sexual harassment advisor about it. You can even talk to somebody else that you trust. It could be a friend, it could be a dean, it could be a lecturer, it could be a deputy dean. Talk to someone about it, talk it through, but make sure that you don't sit and you accept what is making you uncomfortable, all right? So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your attention. I know it was very quick and dirty, <laughs> but I, this is my contact information with also my personal email. Um, if anybody wants to write to me and ask any questions, I'm very open to it. Um, maybe I should just pause very quickly. Are there any immediate questions that I can answer? Any concerns? Anything that I did not share with you appropriately? I see a comment here. Um, what if it's teasing, but you didn't mean it? Again, 
you may be teasing something, but your intention is not to harass them. But if they come to you and they say, Yolanda, I didn't appreciate what you said, then you clarify and say, boy, you know, I never mean it in a sexual nature, you know, just tease me, tease you. If you have that communication and you're able to say to the other person, boy, that was not my intention, then you're clarifying. You're clarifying the circumstances around what the individual thought could have been sexual harassment. So it's okay if you have that conversation. But if you tease and the person really doesn't like it, then please don't do it again. Please don't do it again. I hope that answers the question. Is there anyone else who has a question very, very quickly? I know I'm over my time. I'm sorry. Moderator, you want to take it over from here? Yes. Thank you. Thank it you. was a lot, I know. It was a lot in a very short space of time. Yes. <laughs> but it was very sobering and I'm very sure that the participants have learned. And what will happen is if they have any more questions, if you hang on a little bit, you know, and they have any more questions, sure. I will. I'm not able to hang on because I have actually another work call in about 20 minutes. Um, but I am putting in the chat my name and my email address Mess, email me about anything and I will respond to it guys I'm very open if you guys know anything about you rehab from your previous year groups they will tell you we talk about everything we talk about sex we talk about condoms we talk about sex toys we talk about the world of things so I'm very open to your to your questions all right let me just put oh sorry let me just put it in your chat one time thank right. you so much thank you for that presentation and before we go on our break, we will have the final presentation for the morning while Miss Paul puts her information in the, in the chat. Thank you. Thank you for that presentation, Miss Paul. So we're going to have our last presentation for the morning, everyone. And this presentation is going to be from Mr. Rajay Smith. He would have given you a small welcome this morning, but now he's going to be making a presentation as the Faculty of Medical Sciences Skills presentation. So Mr. Smith, over to you. Right, morning again, everybody. Give me a few minutes to um, set up after um, change devices. Okay, so while Mr. Smith is changing devices i just want to make one correction to information i gave earlier the registration guidance that will be offered for the students of the mbbs through jamsa that will be done tomorrow and not friday as i had said initially so the registration guidance will be done tomorrow for mbbs students through the jamsa through jamsa so that's tomorrow and not friday as i said initially morning again everybody um i hope you hear me um, so again welcome to the faculty of medical sciences and this is now the presentation for the gate committee so before i begin um i'm on the page on um, the instagram page i like everybody to follow the instagram page and the twitter page the the at is ue med sci so that's u w i m e d s c i 
and the we have a giveaway for for um a follower that in this time range between the presentation. So the correct number is three two five six followers on the page, and hope to get that up to at least three thousand four hundred. So we'll know who followed um during the time of the presentation. So the presentation will be done by by myself as well as um Dejane Clark with the SMS PRO. All right, so as mentioned earlier, um, we have a one purpose. It's the one purpose edition for faculty of medical science. Um, it's all about unity of the students and all our plans for the year surrounding our initiative. So just a vision statement um, to advance the faculty of medical sciences through collaboration, integration, and unification amongst all departments. Uh, while working towards achieving a common goal of excellence both academically and extracurricularly. So just a breakdown of the presentation. Um, we have an overview of what happened last year. Um, initiative under the one purpose theme and an overview of our major events for the year. So for the past year, um, the previous committee, they had interdepartmental sports. So all of the sports persons are in the faculty, cricket, football, Netball, table tennis, etc. Um, also, the Miss Medical Sciences pageant for the first time. Um, it was it was successful, successful staging. We also have health fairs throughout the year, which is very interactive and it gives you a first and experience of the of the medical field before actually um, engaging in it, especially for first year students, fresh as yourself. Um, Events that were to be staged and needed improvement was well, the carnival band, where there was no carnival for you, as you know, due to the current situation. The Medside barbecue was also scheduled for later on in the year, as again affected by the coronavirus. Medside week was successful, but I'm seeking to improve it this year. However, um, I broke a leg in the sense that it won't be face to face this year. So we'll have to um, adjust the plans accordingly. Um, sports day scheduled for next year, so all of the sports people in. Can come out as well as have a health innovation challenge, which we get more about um, in the presentation. So again, it's all about one purpose. This is the theme of in all our operations for this year. And it's just, as I say, the faculty colours, and we're seeking that we can have networking amongst the, the, the faculty, so that we'll have life, life, lifelong partnerships moving on into your career. So here are the objectives for the FMS committee this year is to put SMS students on the map. So we want you guys on the map, not just, not just heard from the faculty, but heard from all over the, all over the campus. This is just to improve student abilities and skills through research projects, online and physical outreach, coaching activities, and highlighting social responsibility. Also, concerns are mounting by the day in, this, in the faculty. And just to create a platform for students to voice, voice issues, um, while um, navigating online. Another thing, networking, network, network, network. It's the most important tool in university. Might be difficult um, this semester due to the fact that you want to person face to face, but if you get a group assignment or in a group, you can liaison with these persons and, and network. And also alleviating student apathy. Not because you have 10 assignments, you are here always working, you're not going to find time to engage in other activities. Not everybody will be a leader, but however, if you, if you, some person have to follow, and if you have find time to follow, or find time to lead, and to build your resume as you go along, you'll be better off in applying for a job or getting a promotion in the future. Very important. So the big hallmark for this year is improve advocacy. I'm not sure most of you have seen where a lot of issues are reason in regards to med students. And it's really a time to be a guild counselor and to be um, a med type due to um, issues that have been risen due to coronavirus. So it's just to improve the advocacy around students, ensure that students um, get the best possible outcome of your university experience, um, basically. Also, we'll be continuing the grants for, for students. So some students have it hard now. 
continuing a grant, a $15,000 grant, usually is um, write an essay. Um, and about a, a concerning topic, and it um, broken down, reviewed, and, and then shortlisted persons are interviewed and so forth. But that'll be later on in the year, hopefully. All right, so moving on to more of the nitty gritty of the excitement of MedSci. So, for the major events, just a note to keep in mind, many people infected with COVID-19 show mild symptoms, especially during the first stage of, of the, the disease. Thus, you can still catch the disease from an infected person who only has a mere cough and does not feel well. All right, back to proceedings. So for semester one, uh, we have orientation, which we're currently in now, um, then followed by Miss Medical Science and Coronation. However, due to the whole um, the recent rising cases and more less students on campus, we decided to put this um, for next year so that we can have a face-to-face -face interaction for Miss Medical Science. However, um, applications will be open soon so that um, sections that can be carried out in an online format um, will be carried out um, accordingly, which is essentially in the last week of, of Medical Week. However, as I said, moving into next year, and we have Medical Week in October um, and Heritage Week activities in October as well. Also, the EAC External Affairs um, Committee has a lot of um, outreach. However, these outreach um, will, will possibly be online. So, however, just to increase um, social awareness about these issues, including mental health, World, World AIDS Day, and international posts that clean up breast cancer and so forth. So, you'll see more about that on the, on the MedSci page, which is UE MedSci. Um, so, a commercial break for all those who have lost me, hopefully not. So about 80% of people recover from this disease, which is COVID-19, without needing special treatment. And this is from the website, too, World Health Organization. Right. So back to the overview of major events. So for semester two is the semester where we plan to um, have most of our events due to the whole current situation. So once Carnival is being held, we seek to have a, a mental band this year again. Um, Medla Social. Um, very interactive event, very um, classy one, we'll say. Um, Medside barbecue, um, purple day, which will be next year, where everybody will be encouraged to wear something purple. Uh, FMS gospel concert and uh, Medside sports day, as well as um, the faculty sports day, the health innovation challenge, as mentioned earlier, professional developmental forums, and international women's day forum. So just a yeah, overview of what the orientation committee for medical science is about. It's to just assist with a smooth transition into the faculty to promote the guild, university, and FMS events and sessions to build the One Purpose brand and departmental pride. So even though we're covered under the One Purpose brand, departmental pride is also very important. And to improve faculty relations and communication. So the Faculty of Medical Sciences Week will be under the theme, the evolution of healthcare. As you can see, everything is, is different. And so healthcare is also evolving. And as future practitioners and medical personnel, we have to adjust accordingly. And we are the future, basically. So we have to adjust accordingly from now. So under this theme, we'll be encouraging students to still have an interest in their career that may last a lifetime despite potential risk. But certain persons might be shying away and say, boy, medical, medical practitioners are the persons that in the front line and they don't want to carry this home to the family or whatever, but safety measures are in place, protocols are in place to ensure your safety and know the time and to be brave to, to, to be that person to, to aid in alleviating the issue of pandemic and the potential pandemic in the future. Also to highlight the role of the faculty students in the future healthcare professionals, also stated a while ago, as well as taking head-on decisions in the unified department under the one person. Here we're talking about the One Purpose Initiative a lot because I know a lot of persons that leave the faculty and don't know one person from another department. And we're trying to sever that, that uh, trend. So for the Medical Sciences Week of events, um, this is usually the big week that we, we rain our faculty prior on. So on the Sunday, um, October 25th, we're thinking about the appraise on Zoom. Um, you hear more about that. Um, on the Monday, we usually have uh, departmental work and assess competition. However, we think the move is online. We're going to have a thing called Day in the Life of Medside Student Competition, 
you hear more about that, but basically it's where you post a picture or a video in a day of your life, um, your online life, and in terms of filming a med student, and we repost it, and most likes or the most shares get, get a prize. You hear more about it. You hear more about it. On the Tuesday, we have an aerobic session um, for, um, that we propose to the Physical Therapy Association and a massage 101. Um, on the Wednesday, we have a youth third presentation. On the Thursday, we have um, our first part in our Improving Professionalism Forum. Um, as well as on the Friday, now we have the Perfect Day, the online edition. And next semester, now we have the Perfect Day where we'll We'll tell you more about that when it comes. And on the Saturday, we'll have a Zoom party slash past with medical scientist coordination contestants. So giving a break on the competition, how it was for them, and so forth. So Miss Medical Coordination, as you can see on the screen, that is our Miss Medical Scientist 2018-2020. Um, she's our first queen, um, and it was a great pageant. Um, so this will be the first semester. Too. We have to, as I said, at the reschedule the date, we have no um, confirmed date as yet, but it will be next semester. So, the purpose of Miss Medical Sciences correlation was to create a new avenue through which SMS can express themselves while fostering integration and unity. Additionally, the correlation seeks to highlight our powerful and beautiful women in the faculty of medical science. And these, as stated here, the plans to be covered as the event are in the works, so even if next year they are still issues in that um, plan to cover that because we want second stage in second successful stage. Also for the, the ladies and gentlemen who are active and ready to participate in sports for the department as well as the faculty, but this is a departmental level, an official sport day which is scheduled for March 18 and March 20. So March 18 would be for the indoor event and March 20 for the outdoor event. Again, student apathy has been a thing that affected um, these events. So again, we're seeking to build, build the departmental and faculty pride so that when these events turn up, students will be readily, ready to go, ready to participate, ready to represent their faculty and their department. Also uh, for semester two, we have uh, our barbecue. Um, nothing too, nothing too, um, Far from what a barbecue is, but just to, to um, get a different blend for lunch, probably that day, um, we'll do um, research into what you guys may want. Uh, sometimes persons offer certain things like fried chicken, but we might have quality um, classic this day and provide something special on the menu for a person. Just to have a different taste of lunch for the day if you don't want to be here that day or so forth. So, you hear more about that as well. All right, and I'll now hand over to um, the Adonai Clark to complete the presentation. Hi, good morning, everybody. My name is Diagene Clark. I am the PRO for the Faculty of Medical Sciences right now. So when you're following or interacting or messaging the IG or Twitter page, I'm the one you're talking to. So I won't be taking up too much of your time. I'll just be going through some of the rest of our events for the year. So I want to address something first. I know a lot of you guys in the chat are talking about the WhatsApp group chats, and I have said to you guys you can message the instagram page or the twitter page and ask for the link to the group and we will send it to you we don't want to post it but we will send it to you so you can all join so let me talk about the fpl which is a new initiative this year it's supposed to foster you know engagement and still camaraderie even though we're not all on campus together i know a lot of guys are into FPL and I actually joined my first FPL last year for fun and I understand why the man gets stressed out about it. Um, so I'm encouraging you all to join. The deadline is September 12th. There will be prizes for the top male and the top female at the end of the year and it should be fun. So and the details are on our IG page if you don't write these down right now. Next. So next is the Med Law Social. This is one of the biggest events of the year. If you go on almost any med student or law student's 
Instagram or Twitter and look at their best picture, I can almost guarantee it was taken at the Medlar Social. This is an event that is, it's pretty exclusive to members of the two faculties and it's to foster networking and friendship. It's a really fun event and I'm sure we'll be having it in some variation this year, even if it's not the traditional um, event that's held at UWE we will be having some sort of initiative to foster relationships between the two faculties. Now, MedSci Carnival Van. UWE Carnival is one of the best events UWE ever has. I'm not going to go around it. And this year, since we missed it due to COVID, honestly, I'm not sure if we'll have next year, but it's MedSci Van is always the best van there. Um, it's the most efficient. I know so many people from other faculties who try to get their bands for our truck, but you know, numbers. So it's really, it's really in high demand. I hope you guys all join when we have carnival again. The gospel party is another event that couldn't take place this year because of COVID, but we're definitely going to have it going forward whether it's in a COVIDized manner or in person. We usually have a gospel artist come and lead in praise and worship. And it's really just an uplifting event. As I said before, we don't know the exact format, but don't worry, it will definitely be happening. And finally, we have the UE Healthcare Innovation Challenge, which was also supposed to take place last semester. You can see, but you can see by the dates how close we were to having it. So I had a bunch of groups of friends putting together work, putting in work for the $60,000 grand prize, and they were disappointed. And definitely this will be happening again um, this year. I think anybody with an interest in dreaming, in healthcare, in policy, planning, engineering, advocacy, because we're all such multifaceted students, I think we should, you should start thinking about ideas to enter this competition. It is an excellent opportunity to hone both your creative and your professional skills. So finally, I just want to thank you all for listening. And remember, please, to follow at UEMedSci, at U-W-I-M-E-D-S-C-I, on Instagram and Twitter. And I remember, if you want the links to the WhatsApp group chat, the general freshers group chat, you can message the page and ask for it. And I'll reply very soon. All right, J.D., do you have anything else to say? I know the journey. Thanks um, again. Thank you guys for coming to, um, to orientation, waking up early for the nine o'clock, and have a great rest of the day. And welcome again to the Faculty of Medical Sciences. So, aren't you all glad that you chose FMS? as your place to be and your place to shine. I am so happy to have you. We're all happy to have you. The student leadership is happy to have you and the faculty leadership is excited to have all of you with us. So we have been together and you probably have been sitting because I know you're not standing for the last two hours. So it's time to get up, move around. Uh, we're going to have a 15 minute break just so that you can move around, get your circulation going. And then we're going to come back at 11.15 for the acculturation activities. At the university and especially in the Faculty of Medical Sciences, we, are, we want our students, we are motivated, we want to ensure that our students are personally and professionally developing. We want that to happen. So our personal, and professional development officers will take you through a presentation this afternoon. Dr. Jacqueline Goldburn and Ms. Kadeem Campbell will be doing their presentations when we return. But first, we will have our break and we will return in 15 minutes and then we will have that activity and then we will close off our orientation exercise for today. So we'll go on a little break and I will see you in 15 minutes. Before you go on a break, may I? Sure, go ahead, Dr. Goldburn. Okay, 
the students who participated in the activity yesterday, I sent you an email. Could you please check your email? It will tell you what group you're in and it will give you the instructions as to what you're to do. The volunteer in each group is the group leader and you are required to make your post on the YouTube before you return. So have your 10 minute break and in the last five minutes, do what the email asks you to do and make your post. And when we re return, those are what we will be using. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Wilburn. So we will return in 50 minutes, everyone. I am Dr. Jacqueline Wilburn. By qualifications, I'm a gerontologist. I am a human and organization systems specialist. Just to share from Neil Armstrong, he says, it's one small step for man and one giant leap for mankind. So we will start again today with our small step and we will leap into our giant step for our group. And then as we move on, we'll move on to the wider mankind. Just a thought. The goal or the goals of today are threefold. We started yesterday with identity. When we're able to say who we are, where we're from, and what is our own personal goal. That identity will lead into association and that association will lead into bonding. So at the end of my two sessions, you will at least be able to identify seven persons, be associated with them, and bond. And hence the need for the group activity. So the identity, association, and bonding is what we get out of the acculturation exercise. And this is what is happening today. We have five groups and these groups will present their findings on their group members and these presentations should have already been up on the YouTube page. Unfortunately, the YouTube link that I have is for yesterday. I've not seen any for today and I am not getting into the link. Yes. Yesterday, 28 these persons who groups were seen, they were seen, is an odd number group, not an even number group. And when I do with you, group dynamics, you will understand why. And we'll begin our presentations today with group one. So this is what I'm sharing up to now. I will have a final slide to share, but I will stop that now. And I will look back into the YouTube to see if I find anything. I'm open for questions. Thank you, Dr. Goldburn. I know your presentation didn't go as you had planned, but nonetheless, I will give a few minutes to see if there are any questions that have been posted in the chat. There are no questions just yet. I'll just give a few minutes.
Any questions for Dr. Goldburn regarding the personal and professional development portfolio? Okay, no questions. So, we have spent the morning with each other. I want to thank you all very much. Students, family members, friends, loved ones, thank you so much for coming out to this, our second day of the FMS orientation Today's orientation saw you interacting with mostly the student leaders. In the morning, you would have heard from the guild representatives and student association presidents who, if you reflect on the trend in their presentations, they all encouraged you because they themselves started just like you, maybe last year, two years ago, three years ago, they were all in the same position. They've gone through various years in the program and they gave you sage advice. They told you not to quit, to get involved, to take responsibility for your learning and not to lose your focus and to remember that you are working within a team. So don't just stay by yourself in your program, get to know the other persons in the other programs. Then of course, the topic that is on everybody's lips, COVID, 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 our Dr. Nicholson gave us a very comprehensive presentation on living with COVID and we called it COVID a keep because COVID is keeping. And from the conversations that we had earlier, I could see that you were paying attention and some of the things that we would have been hearing over time that they were reinforced. Ms. Larman from the commuting students office gave us a presentation on what the student, the commuting students department and office has to offer to you. Mr. Clark gave a presentation from you research so that you know that there is a place for you to be giving service before you start to give service as a professional. Ms. Paul gave us that sobering presentation on sexual harassment and you and you know our conversations in this latter part of the evening showed me that yes, you were paying attention to, to what was being said and you, you understood the presentation. And of course the guild president, the FMS guild representative, Mr. Rajay Smith, and also the other representative spoke to you about the guild activities and what is their vision for the upcoming year. And of course, Dr. Goldburn in this final session brought you through some of the discussions that took place and what the students, what the comments that students made during yesterday's, during yesterday's orientation period. So that is our orientation for today. And I want to thank you all for coming, to thank you all for participating. And I want to invite you to day three, which is tomorrow. So we're still not finished yet. We still have day three. And let me tell you, as a program coordinator, I can tell you that tomorrow is one of the days that you don't want to miss because apart from the lessons that we will teach you and all the course information that we will give you, the departments that the presentations that you will get tomorrow and the departments that are presenting tomorrow, you need to know this information so that it will make your transition and traverse through the, through the university as smooth as possible. You need to know how to, how to be a student, how to be a responsible student. You need to know how to register for your exams. You need to know how to pay the university for, the, for this wonderful education that they're giving you and to access all the services. And tomorrow is where all of this information is going to be presented starting again at the usual time, 9 a.m. I encourage you all to come out. And if you know others that might not have been here today and they should have been here, encourage them to come out tomorrow because we are gonna have another day tomorrow filled with, packed with 
information that you need to be able to take you through your sojourn here with us, whether it is three years or four years or five years or six years that you'll be with, the, with us until you achieve that goal. So I want to thank all the presenters uh, this morning, all the ones I mentioned before. Thank them so very much for taking time out of their schedule to come and share with you. And thank you too for choosing the Faculty of Medical Sciences. Thank you for choosing the University of the West Indies because indeed this is your place to shine. So see you all tomorrow and thank you all for coming. The registration assistance activities, as I've said before, you would be contacted from the different departments. There is some help being offered this afternoon for DDS students. Tomorrow for the JAMSA students and for the other students, the departments will contact you regarding your registration assistance. So thank you all for coming and have a great rest of the day, everybody. Thank you.